In this lecture, we will be examining the 1970 event known as the Kent State Massacre. This incident involved the shooting of unarmed Kent State University students by the Ohio National Guard on May 4th of 1970. A total of four students died and another nine were injured in the shootings. And the event was a, a catalyst for severe unrest around the country uh, by protesters against the Vietnam War. The Kent State Massacre is also known as the May 4th Massacre and alternately as the Kent State Shootings. The name chosen by a given person to describe the event may reflect that person's political views on the Vietnam War and the event itself. For the purposes of this lecture though, the, the term Kent State Massacre is used simply because it is the most common name for the tragedy and this name does not uh, reflect an attempt by uh, this lecturer to promote one view or another. On April 30, 1970, President Nixon announced that the U.S. military had begun an invasion of the nation of Cambodia. This was seen by many Americans as an escalation of the Vietnam War. Now, the reaction by Kent State students was much like that of other college students around the country. Almost immediately, protests began on college campuses. Students at Kent State held a protest on May 1st at the Victory Bell on the campus of Kent State. The Victory Bell is an old uh, locomotive bell that was donated to Kent State by the Erie Railroad, and it was often rung after athletic events. A, a vocal anti-war rally was held in downtown Kent as students left local bars on Friday, May 1st, the weather was unseasonably warm and students had been outdoors quite a bit in recent days. A group of students ignited a bonfire and then the gathering grew into a mob of several hundred people. Unknown persons in the crowd tossed bottles at police and broke storefront windows. In response to the disturbances, the mayor of the city declared a state of emergency and local police used tear gas canisters and batons to force the students out of the downtown district and back onto campus. The mayor of the city of Kent ordered a dusk to dawn curfew and students were restricted to campus. Rumors emerged that the ROTC building was going to be a target of militant students. The mayor alerted the Ohio National Guard but did not tell Kent State University officials of changes in security and of the reported terror threats. An anti-war march began approximately 8 p.m. on Saturday evening. Many windows were broken on Main Street and someone set fire to the ROTC building, which you can see in the image accompanying this slide. Fire personnel arrived, but students attacked firemen and their equipment. Police surrounded the destroyed ROTC building and they used tear gas to disperse the students. On Sunday, May 3rd, the Kent State's campus was fully occupied by the Ohio National Guard. Ohio Governor James Rhodes gave a speech um, related to the campus uprising. He insisted he would use whatever force necessary to drive protesters out of the city of Kent. Uh, the speech by Rhodes, which um, some appreciated, um, unfortunately, uh, riled up students on campus and sort of added fuel to the fire, so to speak. The National Guard uh, was told that soldiers, if necessary, could shoot on campus. By 8 p.m. Sunday night on May the 3rd, and a crowd had gathered around the Victory Bell again. The National Guard issued a new curfew and ordered that the gathering uh, had to disperse. Tear gas was fired by troops at the students. The accompanying image here shows tear gas canisters being fired from helicopters, another one of these iconic uh, images related to the uprising. Students moved from the Victory Bell area and staged a sit-in in a campus administration buildings. The mayor of the city of Kent uh, then agreed to meet with students, but only if they returned to campus. When the students returned to campus, though, the National Guard again shot tear gas from helicopters, and many students 
um, in this crowd began to believe they'd been set up to walk into an ambush. I mean, if you can imagine the um, the sensation, I guess, of uh, returning to campus and being fired on, even with just tear gas canisters by uh, helicopters. A few students uh, were also beaten with the batons and stabbed with bayonets as they were driven back to their dorms. Several soldiers also sustained injuries from flying projectiles thrown by the angry students. However, this stage of the conflict uh, paled in comparison with the events of Monday, May the 4th. The National Guard, under orders, did not allow mass gatherings of students on the Kent State campus. At noon on Monday, May the 4th, a group of about 1,500 students gathered on the commons to protest the new rules, as well as the, uh, the invasion of Cambodia. Students were told to disperse, but very few actually heeded the order. Students began to flee the steadily advancing guardsmen, uh, who fired tear gas into the crowd to help break up the massed students. Students reached a parking lot some distance away, but uh, a few students in the crowd began throwing stones at the soldiers. And in response, a few members of the National Guard returned the stone throwing right back at the students. The guard had been ordered back because the crowd had been broken up. Uh, for unknown reasons, though, about a dozen soldiers turned and fired into the crowd, even though the, the confrontation at that point was over. There were a total of 67 shots fired in 13 seconds in the unexpected military action. Four students died in the shootings. Pictured here are Allison Krauss, Jeffrey Miller, Sandra Shire, and William Schroeder. Another nine students were injured one of whom was permanently paralyzed as a result of being shot. Immediately afterward, uh, hundreds of universities, colleges, and high schools shut down in nationwide student strikes uh, in response, again, to the uh, shootings. The event now became a symbol of the Vietnam War protest to many millions of Americans. The rock folk group Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young recorded one of the biggest hits in response to the shootings, a song called Ohio. Eight guardsmen were indicted after the shootings, but all charges were eventually dismissed. The iconic image on this slide depicts Mary Ann Vecchio, a 14-year-old runaway from Florida, as she kneeled over the body of shooting victim Jeffrey Miller. The general in charge of the operation argued that troops were fired upon by a sniper. The guardsmen said they fired in self-defense and in fear for their lives. Students, however, said that the crowd had dispersed and there was no um, immediate threat of any sort to the guard. Most of the students appeared to be returning back to the dorm rooms or going to classes. Many of the witnesses to this day maintained that the National Guard troops had planned all along to shoot before they reached the top of the hill. A recently discovered audio recording of the event contains what sounds like military commands, including the word fire, but it's unclear if this voice was a military officer or a bystander. Uh, this draws to a close our brief look at the Kent State Massacre.